Great. Thanks everybody for joining today. Um, just think a few more folks in here. Hey, welcome to the May meeting of Queen Solid Waste Advisory Board. Um, we will get started um, with, well, actually, Tiffany, do you want to go ahead and give your update and we'll um, take roll call after that? Okay, sure. Thank you, Amy. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tiffany Easton. Uh, for those of you who um, don't know me, I am the event coordinator and emergency response liaison um, here in the office of the Queensborough president. And um, pretty much my, um, I just want to share and extend an invitation to anyone on this call. Um, we recently announced and started our Operation Urban Sustainability Initiative, um, where we focus on several different aspects on um, being more sustainable from um, groundwater and flooding infrastructure, transportation, food, composting, urban agriculture. There are different um, sections within um, urban sustainability. And so we have smaller committees that meet um, at once a month. And our next meeting is June 9th. Uh, it's a virtual meeting um, and we do breakout rooms at, at 6 p.m. We meet, we introduce each other and then we do breakout rooms and each participant uh, can choose which breakout room pertains to them. Um, whatever you, you you have your expertise in, you can go in that um, breakout room. But the purpose of the meetings are to build on um, research to create a report to release annually. So we just launched this initiative. So I just want to extend an invitation on behalf of the office for anyone interested. Could you please, um, you can just send over your, I'll drop my information in the chat, but if you are interested, if you could just send your information in the chat, thank you so much and um, have a great meeting. Okay, and so Tiffany, real quick. Um, that's you're just asking for individuals um, to join as part of this effort, right? Because I think that that is on our agenda um, for tonight to discuss as the QSWAB to formally participate and have a designated representative for QSWAB. But we just want to extend the word to anybody who's interested to please join the effort, correct? Correct. correct. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and I'll, I'll still be on this call. I'll just be like on mute in the background. So I don't want to interrupt your meeting. No, 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 that's great. I mean, that's definitely on our agenda. So if there's additional things um, to add and additional questions we have that um, you and Kat can answer, that would be wonderful. Perfect. Thank um, you. Let's see. Antonella, you have your hand up. I just wanted to see if you had a question on that um, first. Sorry, that was a mistake. Thank you. Sorry. No, it's okay. All right. A few more folks joining. All right, um, so Rachel, our, our recording secretary, do you want to go ahead with the roll call, please? Uh, yep, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Starting with our individual members, Amy Martman. Present. Present. Andrea Scarborough. Present. Great. Um, Anita Chan. Present. Great. Bilal Key. Present. Driving. Present. Oh, great. <laughs> Be safe. Um, Diane Song Yu. Um, Gil Lopez. Okay. Uh, Janet Ferreira. Present. Great. Um, Jasmine McPherson is out today. Jennifer Maldonado. Present. Great. Jenny Lynn. Present. Okay. Kangela Moore. Not yet. Okay. Kara Napolitano. Yep, here. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, they're on, but no, there were no, no mic. Which didn't make it. Uh, Catherine Zervino. Present. Thank you. Mac Lawrence. Hey, Rachel, I'm here. <laughs> Thanks, Mac. Um, I am here. Richard Nunez Lawrence. Here, present. Great. Thank you. Ruth Essa. Present. Here. Awesome. Susan Latham. Here. Great. Uh, Toby Shepard Block. 
Help me. Present. Um, Vanessa Ventola. Present. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, for community boards, um, community board one, Antonella De Severio. Yes, present. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Is anyone on from community board two? Um, hi, uh, Frank is. Great. Thank you. Um, community board three, Megan Rockwell. Yes, present. Great. Thank you. Community board four, Carol Maholsky. Present. Awesome. Thank you. And got, got you on the phone. Um, community board five. Walter Clayton, community board five. Great. Thank you so much. Um, is anyone on from community board six? Yes, Heather Beers, Dimitriata. Great, thank you so much. Um, community board seven. Uh, Dr. James Servino, community board seven. He's here, he's muting himself. Okay, <laughs> perfect, thank you. Yeah, I was like, I thought I saw him. Uh, thank you. Uh, Susan Cleary is out today. Um, community board nine, is anyone on from CB9? No. Is, uh, is there a representative from community board 10? Okay. Uh, do we have anyone on from community board 11? Okay. Uh, is anyone on from community board 12? This is Reverend Thorpes. Great, thank you. And do we have anyone on from community board 13? And do we have anyone on from community board 14? Okay, and then moving on to organizations. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Rachel, I didn't hear my name, maybe. Oh, yep, I, I got you down. Um, oh, board seven, yeah, got seven. it, okay, yep, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Uh, okay, is uh, Mary Ar Arnold on from Cures? Thank you Present. Present. Okay. Thank you. Um, Guardians of Flushing Bay. I think I saw Rachel Wu. Hi, yes, present. Great, thank you. Um, Long Island City Partnership. Charles Yu said he was out today. Okay. Uh, Adam Mitchell, Mr. T. Carding. Here. Great. Uh, Ryan Brenner from NYC H2O. Yeah, I'm here. Great, thank you. Is anyone on from the Queens Botanical Garden? Yes, Luisa here. Oh, great, thank you. And uh, Queens Chamber of Commerce, Thomas Gretsch. Greg? Hello, I'm here, thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, and from the Queens County Farm Museum, I think I saw Sarah Meyer. Yes, I'm present. Hello. Hi, thank you so much. And is anyone on from the Sutphin Boulevard bid? Okay, do we have anyone on from Tully Environmental? And last, anyone on from Waste Management of New York? Okay, that, did I miss anyone? Is there anybody whose name uh, was not called? Um, I'm Allison Allen. I'm actually with the Manhattan Solid Waste Advisory Board. I'm the organics chair. This includes resources. Excellent. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Yeah, I guess if you're a guest, also. Um, yeah, Dan Martin. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Great. I got you down, Dan. Thank you. Welcome. Um, okay. okay and um, we do have a quorum. Excellent. So let's go ahead and vote on approval of our March and April minutes. So all members um, received a draft of those. Um, can I get a motion to approve the March Before and April Before you minutes? do that, Amy, oh, sure. um, there should be a name change on the minutes. It says sure. QSWAB agenda on the copy of the minutes. It should say QSWAB minutes. Which uh, month is that? Or April. Okay, great. I will make that update now. Thank you, Carol. Thank you very this much, is, Carol. This yes. is Susan Latham, and I will make a motion to approve with that amendment. Thank you. I second. Balaki. 
Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Um, all those uh, in favor? Aye. 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 And are there any opposed? Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Um, next on our agenda tonight um, is Kat Bressler with the uh, sorry, Queens um, Borough President's Office to talk about the Operation Urban Sustainability. Um, Kat, are you ready to um, speak about that? Um, this will also be something um, us as QSWAB will be um, voting whether or not the QSWAB should participate as QSWAB um, and send a representative um, to represent us and then report back um, as well to this um, body. Well, hi everyone, and thanks for making quorum tonight. Everybody, shout out to you. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Uh, you love to see it. Um, if it's all right with everybody, I'll do a little share screen so that um, uh, I think you're going to see my email quickly. If I, uh, oops, give me a second. Try not to pay attention to my email, real quick, folks. Just a little bit of business. I had it all pulled up. I'm sorry. I was queued up, I swear. I was thinking I was going to share it with Rachel real quick and then ask her to do the work for me. But I'm kidding. I've got it. So um, we briefly went over some of the ideas uh, last month. And I'll uh, just go over this again. And I can share a link in the chat or however everybody sees fit to best go about this. But um, what we're attempting to do or endeavoring to do is uh, from Queensborough Hall uh, and, and through the um, behest of the borough president, Donovan Richards Jr. is uh, assemble a group called um, Operation Urban Sustainability. And what we'd like to do is focus on uh, the next steps to bringing to fruition um, the Renewable Rikers project and uh, proliferating compost throughout the borough and multiplying our open street alliances. There are a few other uh, grounding principles around uh, what we're doing. As you can see, we've got uh, them up on shared. Um, but uh, what I wanna sort of uh, focus you around is what some of our uh, committees are and uh, opportunities for QSWAB to uh, be involved and engage with. Um, we've got groups that are uh, hyper-focused on uh, food composting and urban agriculture. And actually, uh, my colleague Tiffany Eason is here this evening uh, and very passionate about that topic and sort of facilitates uh, that group. Uh, we're focused on energy systems and buildings uh, as another uh, sort of committee working group, um, environmental justice, education, and outreach, food, uh, flooding resilience, nature, and ecosystems and transportation and walkability. Obviously the transportation and walkability working group would focus itself towards um, the multiplying open streets initiative and others as they um, moved through the next year. Uh, we hope to deliver uh, a report um, in May that should help um, focus and uh, speak to the borough presidents uh, and, and, and all the members uh, that have assembled um, goals for next budget year, uh, both for our uh, budget at Borough Hall and uh, the city writ large. So, you know, flooding and resilience, nature and ecosystems might take on projects around blue belting and uh, the environmental justice, education and outreach probably gonna be the group that focuses more on renewable Rikers, energy systems and buildings. Uh, we'll be focusing on 
uh, green roofs and lights out and other initiatives uh, because buildings are our largest producers. Uh, food composting, uh, urban agriculture. Uh, we, we all know we've spoken at, uh, ad nauseum in this group about the need to compost, compost, compost. Uh, if we're not doing that effectively, we're really not uh, beating the clock in an effective way. Um, I feel like I've spoken quite a bit, so I wanna take a breath and a sip of water. Uh, allow for Tiffany to maybe uh, chime in in case I forgot something because uh, sometimes I do that. And then maybe open the floor for some questions, Amy, at all. How do we feel about that? Yeah, um, Tiffany, did you wanna add anything at this point? I think Kat um, did a great job covering all of our objectives and our um, what, what our expectations are and what it is that we're trying to do in connecting the swab to um, this operation. So thank you, Kat. And no, I don't, I don't have anything to add. You covered it all, thanks. Okay, we'll go ahead and open it up um, to questions. Um, do you have a question? I guess wait to be called on this. Let's know you have a question um, in case there are multiple. Um, does anybody have any questions? I have one. Yeah, go ahead. Listening to the, listening to the different categories that Ms. Bresler has uh, focused on that would be part of the report. I was wondering if, not, if this would be duplication of some of the work that the committees on the planning boards do. You know, that's a really great question and I'm glad that you brought it up. Uh, we hope to, <laughs> sure, I, I, I will attempt to. Um, first, let me clarify, when you're talking about the committees, uh, are, are we talking about uh, community boards? Yes, because most, as far as I know, most community boards have uh, at least six or seven committees. Some of which are cover transportation, cover environmental, uh, cover uh, well. The, that would the health and human services committee would be uh, renewable Rikers, I think. Yeah. So, so in a way, I think it's sort of possibly duplication. Well, we'd like to think of it as <clears throat> compiling, uh, and also. Uh, the community boards are um, autonomous agencies, right? They are allowed to act and behave at their own. And this is more um, compiling of the information and providing a written report, both to the media, to the mayor, and to the council about the borough president's uh, advisement, um, budgetary, uh, well, well, community boards do that um, needs assessment and they do uh, provide advisory. This will be a comprehensive report um, engaging with our, uh, our CBOs. There are uh, colleges and, and, and other larger groups like uh, Climate Jobs New York, um, Cornell, um, Sierra Club. Um, there's a, a, a much longer list and I'm happy to uh, bring that up next if you'd all like uh, to look at that uh, to, to see who's signed on. But I think that uh, what, what this provides us is an opportunity to bring even more stakeholders to the table uh, where community boards um, have uh, appointed members that vote. Um, this document may be um, academic and advisory for the whole borough towards the New York City budget. And if I could just add on to that, um, I would think of it more of as a way to expand the conversation to have like a more inclusive and comprehensive report from our office, but making sure that we are including all of the 
um, community boards, the CBOs, the agencies, and as Kat just said, so that we can um, be more inclusive with this report. Thank you. Um, Kat Trevino, you have a question. Hi, nice to see you, Kat B. You can't really see me, so let me take my put my video on for a minute. I'm just running around my kitchen, so I was like, you don't need to see all this. Um, so yeah, great to see you. And um, you know, Coastal's already committed to working with you, but I thought it might be helpful to just talk about, you know, what are you envisioning that you're looking for from people? You know, what sort of commitment is it? What sort of um, give giving back from us are you looking for? So that's really it. Thank you. No, thanks. Um... And, and Tiffany helps me a lot with this too, organizationally. Uh, sometimes uh, James and I have a lot in common uh, with the wonky wonk uh, uh, data uh, and um, maybe uh, a little bit more in the process detailing of, um, we wanna get granular with the who, the what, the where, the when, and the why, and the how of um, where was the antecedent uh, or need for uh, the solution that we're driving at. So we need to provide some historical information. We've got a brand new council that might uh, uh, not know that we're um, all, all being built up over here on saltwater marshes, and it's uh, terribly unsustainable. And we're going to need some some bigger global views. Um, so we need to understand the historical context of where we came from um, and have um, a, a long plan for what we're going to do. Um, I keep speaking about this. We we heard from Noah. Uh, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration this week about uh, a third year of probably record uh, breaking rain. Uh, and they did it here in New York, their announcement, because they want to make sure that folks understand that uh, the Gulf isn't the only place to expect hurricanes from. We need to start preparing for hurricane season to be continually in New York and the Northeast. And uh, what does that look like for urban sustainability in a borough like ours? Our group uh, has to focus on um, what was done in the built environment and how unsustainable that is and what we're gonna do, not just this year, not just five years, not just 10 years, but uh, keep, keep building up our steps. But we, we do need to make a plan for this year for how to get us to where we're going with groundwater uh, rising in the feet um, year by year. Uh, and and uh, not, a, not a real um, flushed out plan from our council and our mayor and, uh, on, on what to do next. So our borough has to come together as, as the most deeply impacted uh, to, to speak up about what our needs are and, and, and talk to, you know, the whole city. I see you, James. Doctor. Hey, I want to reiterate what um, Catherine is saying. The other very important component and why this, um, this task force is going to be very important is that you have a lot of development going on on properties along the waterfronts, close to the waterfront, adjacent the waterfront, and these properties are being remediated. They're the last bastions of, of empty space, and much of them are seriously, grossly contaminated. What, what myself and other environmental uh, scientists don't understand is that how do they issue permits in areas, you know, Let's use well. It's point for an example. It's one big saturated sponge of partially remediated in certain areas of serious contamination. As the sea levels rise, as of current, you can start to see the pressure on the groundwater 
rising to the surface to grade. And, you know, regardless of how they put these uh, liners in, uh, barriers, buffers, we're going to see saturation. No, there are not going to be dolphins flowing down Park Avenue, although I'd wish. But that's not the extreme measure that we climate scientists are, 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 are requesting. We're saying you're going to have like consistent flooding. You're going to have groundwater pressure rising and putting uh, serious coastal zones at risk of flooding on a normal storm. Forget about hurricanes. We're talking about nor'easters, serious rainstorms. There's going to be a saturation of this so-called sponge in all the coastal zones within New York City. And how are we going to deal with partially contaminated soils that are being remediated in some of these brownfields, brownfields and Superfund sites that are not cleaned up to a level that is going to be able to protect against public health? Yes, they say they're going to be protected. With, um, the, the public health will be protected. We understand that. But in a non-climate change world, in a non-flooding world, how are we going to deal with that? And hopefully we can address these concerns um, in, the, in, these, in this coming year. Thanks, Catherine. James, James I love your background. Uh, it goes with my NOAA uh, statement earlier. Uh, I just want to, um, you know, kind of bring it down a little bit more granular. Uh, you know, I, I, to what you were saying with just regular rain, uh, I, I'm getting calls from Whitestone and East Elmhurst, places that were hit in Ida. And I'm just talking about what we saw in May. We're not even at our heavy. And these are, you know, I, I, I talk at nauseum about our catch basins and how they're just not, you know, they're doing their their little best to, to get our water out, but uh, they are just not enough. And um, we, we've got to do whatever we can to explain to folks, uh, you know, some, some planning and also some preparedness. Um, you know, lots of planning has got to go on and lots of education is going to go on. And uh, there's some really smart folks here in QSWAB and it really is going to take all of us. Uh, that's why we've assembled such a large group. We really appreciate what our community boards are doing. Uh, and we just want to continue to work with, you know, everybody that we've got uh, here at Queens to uh, here in Queens County to, to help dig us out of this mess Robert Moses got us into. Um, I wanted to I think, um, hold on a sec though. Um, I just wanted to, Antonella, you had your hand up before. I just wanted to see if you had a question. No, no, sorry. No, I was gonna, we've been getting complaints on our board about um, the uh, composting site. We had the big reuse and they were forced to move. Uh, and um, I don't know, I think that's probably not for this session, but we could, I, that, I, it's probably inappropriate right now. I can bring it up some other time. Well, but I would, you know, if you don't have my email, I will make sure it's in the chat. And Tiffany and I would like to follow up on that. Yeah, because right now they're putting, uh, they're envisioning a baby park in that area and they forced big reuse to, now they're moving to Brooklyn, but the people at, at the, um, I think it's not Ravenswood, Astoria Houses, I think. Um, they were complaining that they didn't, there wasn't a lot of input from that community and they really wanted to, um, re, they wanted to keep the composting, the, the big reuse um, uh, organization there so that they can compost in the area. So that's, that's just a comment that I wanted to relay. Also, Beck, I definitely want to hear from you because I don't talk to you enough. And by that, everybody should know that I've already had two meetings with the man today. <laughs> but I, uh, I, I see some stuff in the chat and I just want folks to please follow up with me by email, especially about flooding um, and, and to kind of a, respond a little bit to folks who are seeing flooding in areas that aren't on the flood maps. Uh, during NOAA's briefing uh, yesterday, 
their response, uh, FEMA's response to that was uh, they are really tracking coastal and tidal flooding and that um, it is more the city's response or responsibility to uh, develop where um, the, the sewer and infrastructure uh, inland flooding uh, maps should reflect. Um, and, you know, a, a reporter brought up that uh, someone died in Queens in an area where the map does not show flooding. And how can we prepare ourselves for these evacuation zones, for know your zones and, and, every, and, and tell our neighbors to sign up for Notify NYC when uh, our, our prediction maps uh, aren't, aren't doing their best job. So uh, I, I hear you, we hear you at Borough Hall. Uh, we are definitely trying to do everything we can to uh, get folks prepared out there. Um, and, and please don't hesitate to reach out to me offline and continue these conversations that are happening in the chat. Mac, did you wanna go ahead and ask the question? Well, hey, Kat, well, thank you to you and thank you to Tiffany for leading this and Queensborough President's Office. I mean, this is definitely, I mean, we, we see what we're dealing with, you know? I mean, we're living in it, we're living around it. I mean, last year was scary, you know, the amount of storms we were getting. Um, you know, I was greatly affected by it personally. My family was as well. So, you know, that's not how we're supposed to be. I mean, uh, that's where it looks like things are going and our city definitely needs to adapt and learn and uh, prepare, you know, at a very quick pace, probably the quickest we need to see it, you know? Um, my, my question is more general though. I know that this is going to be for a report that's gonna be, um, I guess, finished or for next year, but like how long is the project, you know, or the operation urban sustainability? Like what's the duration of it? It's gonna be like- In perpetuity. Okay, perfect. It will provide a report every year every for year. advisement okay. for the next fiscal year. Okay. I mean, in perpetuity, as long as the folks keep realizing this. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, there were some um, comments in the chat. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Back to if Mary, if you wanted to say anything beyond what you put in the chat or reiterate what you put in the chat. I, I just sent the link to Kat Bresler. This is, this is not news, you know. It's not news. Just nobody's done anything. And Andrea, you had put something in the chat. Did you want to speak to that? Um, Kat and I have spoken. <laughs> she actually was part of a tour uh, where we showed um, the impacts of groundwater flooding in our community. So she's well aware. Okay, and, and and Mac were Mac and I were in that a meeting today, and I was quoting you, uh, so I want you to know your, your spirit uh, uh, and your research uh, is how uh, okay. we are staying informed. Um, you know, I often speak of, you know, Mac and I. I, I hate to, you know, just guess that we're you know younger <laughs> than some of the folks <laughs> who provide us lots of guidance and without that kind of institutional knowledge and um history uh we would not be as savvy and we would not be as ahead of the game as we are even as far behind as we are yeah. you know um having that foia information about the jamaica uh water uh water and wells right um mm -hmm. was was very helpful uh, and, and we're speaking to that uh, both in the meeting then and, and now, uh, you know, as, as the rising water table goes, uh, we, we've got to come up with innovative solutions. DEP spoke about a pilot program happening on FOTCH that they're going to um, yeah. use a sort of um, gravity 
uh, to affix what what's going to be essentially a French drain into the storm sewers, yeah. uh, which it, if it works, it works and it'll be helpful. But again, these are uh, mitigations, not yes. solutions. Exactly. It's not a holistic approach. And what we need is a holistic approach, because if we lower the water table, we lower groundwater flood, I mean, we, we, we eliminate actually groundwater flooding. But I'm glad to see that it's not falling on deaf ears. So thank you guys. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Rev Thorpe, I saw that um, you uh, had somebody in the, uh, had something in the chat about pumps uh, that the city refuses to turn on. Can you, um, can you just give me a little bit more uh, context? Okay, the matter of fact, right down the street from my house, there is one of the uh, pump locations. And we were in a meeting many, a few years back and they told us literally that they weren't gonna turn the pumps on uh, again until the year 2026. Are these DEP pumps? Yes. Can we follow up offline? Sure. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I want to, I, I need some more context and information, whatever we can gather and I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back to DEP. Okay. And you can come over and see the pump itself, but um, when the pumps were on, there was less of a complaint of a high water table. Are we talking about station six? It, I think that's it might be. Called. Yeah, it might be station six. Mm -hmm. So I, I do want to provide a little bit of feedback on that from what we got from uh, DEP is because it is a uh, con contaminated area. Um, that's the issue with why they can't turn on uh, the, um, the pumps at uh, station six. That's not what they told us. They told us. I was, was going to say, I've never heard that. They tell us it was could, you repeat, could you repeat that? It's not turned on because it's contaminated. Yeah. The because it's in the area of a super fun site. Okay, that they might be saying, our Reverend Forbes, they might be speaking to uh, over uh, by Brinkerhoff because that is a contaminated site area, not Station Six. Station mm -hmm. Six is around in the 160s. But again, irrespective of whatever their reason is for not turning on the pumps, that would create relief, especially to, uh, I know, I, I mean, you saw a senior in a mold infested, unable to use her basement, right? <coughs> What's plan B? Give us a plan B. If you don't want to do that, then give us a plan B. And I know this is not the forum for this kind of conversation. So I will um, hold my maybe, tongue and try to make your next meeting. Maybe um, Rev Thorbes and, and Andre and, and, and Matt, maybe we have a, a, another conversation next week or the following week, uh, just to continue to dive deep into this. Sure. Southeast Queens issue. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Oh. Um, I know there's uh, been some few comments in the chat, but does anybody have any other, um, any questions or any of the issues they brought up in the chat that they'd like to discuss here before we um, take a vote on Queen Swab um, involvement in this? Yes, Allison. Hi, everybody. I'm new to uh, the Queen Swab, so I apologize that I don't have the background <clears throat> on a lot of this, but I, I'm the um, Manhattan Swab Chair of the Organics, and I, I love what you were saying about, you know, how you're going to have organics in the study. You're working with a lot of groups. We're doing a lot regarding the, the legislation, um, the uh, um, Council Member Hanif's bill. And um, I don't know if this is something that, you know, we started reaching out to the other swabs. We work closely with Brooklyn, starting with the Bronx, um, but, you know, it's kind of a citywide effort. We'd like to see mandatory organic citywide. We are, um, you know, fighting to get budget for it, as well as get all the council members signed up for it. I, I know not all of the Queens council members are signed on, 
but um, you know, this may be a topic for another meeting, um, but I just wanted to kind of uh, introduce the idea that I, I'd like to start talking to somebody here to see how we could potentially work together. Yeah, we, we have an organics recovery committee. Um, our committee chair is Jasmine McPherson. She's not on um, today. Um, we also have a legislative committee um, and Richard is on as well. So we can um, provide an introduction um, with those two with you as well. Um, Thank you. And to kind of continue that conversation and then, yeah, because compost is a component of this, um, this initiative and this group, um, we definitely want to perhaps be um, additionally, additionally involved. Um, does anybody else have any questions on the Queen Saw participation in the Operation Urban Sustainability? Okay, um, so can I get um, a motion for Queen Swab participation in Open, Operation Urban Sustainability? I allow key motion that um, Q Swab participates in the Urban uh, Sustainability Program with the um, Office of the Queen Swab President. I'll second, Tom Gretsch. Thank you, Tom. Okay, so all those voting members in favor, please say aye. 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 And are there any op opposed? And are there any abstentions? Okay. So, um, yay. So, yay, we get to officially be part of this cat. We're looking forward to it. Can you remind us when the next meeting is? June 9th. Or June 9th. Oh, 6 p.m. That's fine. Yes. <laughs> Tiffany's really excited that you all are coming to help her out. Yes, I'm really, really excited. So thank you all who have said I. <laughs> we, we look forward, I look forward to seeing you um, at our next meeting. Thank you. All right. Thank Many you, everybody. Many hands may <laughs> light work, you know, and uh, you, you all are already giving so much of yourselves to QSWAB. Thank you for continuing to extend yourselves uh, a little bit more. And those who were not able to vote um, and your uh, heart and your spirit and your effort is with us, we thank you also. Um, all right. So we will be, um, if there is anybody um, that is on currently that is interested in being the designated representative to attend these meetings on behalf of QSWAB. You don't have to say now, but if you are, um, that would also require you to attend the meetings and then report back as well and um, actively participate. Um, so we can ask for representatives um, at another time, um, unless anybody would and like to- And as them. many uh, representatives that want to attend, there isn't a, a one and done, uh, as aforementioned, we are looking for many hands make light work. Uh, so whomever is interested, you are all welcome. Yeah, and anybody who's interested, please join, attend the meetings as an individual, as representative of your community board. Um, just we're in this context for this meeting, just discussing QSWAB's official participation as the QSWAB. Um, and it doesn't exclude any members. So you can be an active member of QSWAB and also participate not as a designated member of QSWAB. There's, yeah, lots of opportunity here. So um, we look forward to it, Kat. Thank you so much for you and Tiffany to be on today to um, go over that. Um, and like Kat said, um, if you do have questions or issues, um, I know this was really geared to talk and address a lot of those, um, please reach out to Kat. Um, offline um, or Tiffany, please, um, we can connect you if you didn't grab the email from the chat um, so we can continue those conversations. All right, thank you very much. Um, uh, let's see. Yes, and sorry, I'm just reviewing the chat. Frank, um, Frank, you had a conversation question about compost, ask you to hold that um, and we'll um, get that to that later in our agenda. Um, all right, so the next thing on our agenda is um, committee reports. I know we don't have everybody here tonight, but um, let's see, Richard, do you wanna start with the legislative committee update? Okay, 
Okay, well, we'll pause on Richard for now. Um, let's see, Janet, do you wanna give the communications committee update? Yes, okay. Um, yeah, so I actually, in, in terms for the communications <coughs> committee, um, we're working on phase one, which is really just updating the website. Um, collectively, when discussing the website with Anita, who's really like spearheading, um, putting together things on WordPress, which, um, you know, also she's working with Matt. Um, definitely, you know, we're going to be like color coordinating like events, especially things that are like reoccurring, like farmers markets. Um, we have June coming up, so there's a lot of um, events like the, you know, the stop and swap at Queens Farm. Um, there's another event at Astoria Park, uh, the Queens Safe Disposable event. Um, all of this stuff will be. Some of them are already posted on social media. Um, but also just, you know, kind of just getting that communication out of just in terms of events and even thinking further, um, July is plastic free month. So that's just something that we really want to um, amplify as well. And hopefully um, as we're updating the website also attend in-person events. Um, I know the Queens Farm has reached out to us to, to do any informative, um, you know, have like our little table with our like QR code. So that's something that we're still working on. Um, I also attended the education um, uh, committee and really informative. I think we're like hands on hands, like peanut butter and jelly with what they're pulling together. Um, so I'll be, you know, moving forward um, on my end, just, you know, joining their meetings because I think we, it's just great information that whatever we could amplify on their end as well. Um, so yeah, just like those little things right now, just kind of really being informed and um, yeah. Thank you. Oh, I guess we'll segue into the Education Committee update. Kara. Yes, hello. Um, so a couple of things that we are working on, working towards. Um, Janet was very nice and attended our last meeting. So that was great that a couple of the committees got to connect. So uh, Dan put together a list of really nifty social media posts that are all kind of educational bits from the uh, State of Waste in Queens report. Um, so we're going to work on getting some visuals or, you know, kind of preparing those and sending them over to Janet so she, she has some extra educational content that we have already created as a swab. We already have it. We just need to fit it into, you know, putting it into little bite-sized pieces so we can share it on social media. Um, yeah, and then we also are putting together a resource list using all the resources that were um, organized for the State of Waste in Queens report. We got a, a copy of a really long spreadsheet with a lot of amazing Queens resources. So we just wanted to find a way to get those um, on the website for folks who come through our site to be able to access them. All. That's what we're working on. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, let's see, Ryan, do you have a solid waste uh, planning committee update? Yes, I do. Um, so, so we've gone through the state of waste uh, in Queens report and pulled out um, all of the goals that are listed at the end, um, goals and targets, and uh, identified the um, committees that that seem most relevant to that goal. Um, last meeting, we uh, last Monday, we we went through and kind of um, figured out overarching themes from the goals um, as as a next step towards prioritizing um, some of that work. So some of the goals are already underway um, or are perhaps um, less relevant now than when the report was created and. Some are, are more pressing. So our, our next step is going through um, all of those goals and, and trying to figure out what our priorities should be um, now going forward. So we can, we can share the progress that we've made in terms of identifying the committees that seem uh, most relevant to all the goals, as well as our kind of overarching um, synthesis of, of the goals. Um, but that's that's where we're at. Thank you so much. Um, Bilal, did you want to provide an update? Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, the Environmental Justice Committee was proud to have uh, attended the and supported uh, the cleanup uh, that was in Hollis on the LLI Double R train station stop in Hollis on 99th Avenue. 
uh, myself, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer and Andrea we were there and we attended and we supported uh, Abula Neighborhood Cleanup Group, uh, Ms. Angela uh, Niskis. Um, and um, it went extremely well. So I will share the photos to everyone um, and what we were able to accomplish that day as well um, in an all email to the swab. Um, we also are looking into as a committee exploring more a way of to collaborate with the other committees because as we know the environmental justice uh, movement as consists of other overlap with the edu with education with also legislation and things of that nature so we do want to uh, figure out how we can collaborate with the other com um, committees that are present here to share and do the work um, of the Environmental Justice Committee uh, and to advance the goals of the overall swab in addressing solid waste in Queens. Um, and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. And I apologize that I couldn't come to the cleanup because my son had a school play. Otherwise I would have been there. It was like right at the same time. So I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> but thank you for your, thank you for putting that on. Um, hopefully we can have more in the future. Yes. Hey, Amy? Um, yes, hi, this is Susan. I just, Bilal, I just wanted to say that the, what we're doing in the planning committee is really looking at all of those recommendations and trying to identify which committees, um, and the environmental justice committee is on a lot of them with other committees. And um, we're hoping that that's going to provide a framework for how the various committees can overlap on shared mm. issues. So yes. that hopefully is going to be coming soon, but that's exactly what we've been working towards is figuring out exactly what our goals are as mm -hmm. QSWAB so that mm -hmm. the various committees can collaborate and we're all kind of going towards the same goals, which obviously is gonna take collaboration and it's gonna take yes. vetting by all the committees. But that is just explaining a little bit more what Ryan was talking about and how it totally ties in with what you're saying. So- Absolutely, um, we're in, we're on the same page. And there, um, all the committee chairs should have been invited to the Slack for the additional communications um, aspect for all of the committee chairs um, to hopefully make that um, line of communication a little bit easier um, to do. So if anybody needs to be added to that, um, or if you have any questions, you can reach out to myself and Kara um, about that. Um, all right, so Richard, uh, legislative committee update. Yes, sorry about that before. Car passed by, <laughs> it's a little noisy. My, my window's actually open today. <laughs> Um, so, um, so, so in our last meeting, we had a lot of different issues, issues that we talked about. We talked about some of the, about, um, the, the, um, the, the, the state campaign to get rid of, uh, cigarette butts, um, that, that was, um, uh, you know, a point that, that we talked about. And some of the things that we t talked about was not only to, see if we can get the other swabs involved, but also if we can um, create some kind of a process here. So where we, when we approve um, something, um, let's say if we want to support um, the, 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 the bottle bill, um, then it can be brought up to, to this body. And I think in some of my presentations, I, I did talk about um, um, when, when, what we support um, uh, as a committee, um, then then we can be able to to get it approved in this in, in the larger body to to ultimately be on the the um, uh, to be recommended to be on the the borough president's agenda. And um, I think you know I'll of course you know send um, the 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 legislative um, minutes to to the, to the larger body in the email, but but um. I think um, more, more than anything else, that was one of the larger things that we were talking about, was, which, was, which was really just process. And um, if, if we can kind of talk briefly about that, I think that that would be um, a, a good idea. I think that's a great, uh, this is Susan. I think that's a great idea and that we have a policy uh, so that we understand as a committee what the legislative committee does and what the body, the larger QSWA body does, right? So there's different kinds of things that we may be asked to sign on or endorse a campaign. 
Um, maybe that requires all of QSwab to decide that. We may be asked to provide, um, uh, and I'm sorry, I don't remember um, the person who's here from Manhattan Swab, but who's talking about this piece of legislation. If we're asked to provide input, maybe that's something that just the legislative committee does, or and then they make their recommendation. But then there's also stuff that comes up in between meetings. And so how do we deal with that as a body to vote on that? So there's a bunch of different issues, but it, it provides a level of um, like independence to some degree so that the legislative committee understands that they are empowered to do X, Y, and Z, but there are other things that require the full QSWAB to uh, agree on. Is that kind of what you're thinking? That's exactly what, what's on my mind. In, in in, in our meeting, that's exactly what we talked about because it, um, through through our minutes, you'll see that you know there's some things that that we'll support that we say oh you know like like um, skip the stuff bill for example comes up and it's something that we support as a committee and within um, our reports we'll say all right you know as a committee we support this but then. You know, as as an entity that's kind of like created on the behest of 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 the borough president, you know, um, and as an advisory board, then you know, um, process then becomes all right. What what next, right? And and when it's when the minutes are approved, when my reports were approved, then you know, um, it what it would be great if if the next step would be that recommendation to the borough president to say. QSWAP supports this now, you know, what do you think? And, um, you know, if that can be the next level, then that's great. And the same thing when it comes to the, the other swabs, it'll be great if, if we can work with the other swabs, if, you know, the borough president would support it, if that's the process, um, then working with the other swabs to, to get things done, that would be, that would be fantastic if that's part of the process as well. Yeah, we definitely have open communication with the other swabs. Um, I think you're already in touch with the Man Manhattan Swab Legislative um, Committee Chair as well. Um, and, you know, Brooklyn um, and each of them independently have uh, mechanisms in place um, that their full bodies have voted on to when those legislative asks do come up between meetings, right? How do we vote for that? Um, and what is that process? Yeah, and each committee, um, when you have something ready from the committee to bring to the QSWAB, we can easily add it to the um, agenda, right? So um, we can all discuss as an agenda item, as a full QSWAB and get input if you need feedback or have a vote then to push that out to the borough president's office as a recommendation. So I think a lot of that in place, we don't have right now that um, kind of voting between meetings um on on things just yet um so i mean i don't know if kat or tiffany are on but you know we can i don't know if we need a full change of bylaws in order to address that and do that or um if we can take a vote here i'm not quite sure what the the mm, rules i'm to, still here on, on that yeah. procedural element because I, I know there is some um, potential feedback that has been asked of QSWAB on a couple of people, pieces of pending legislation, um, but that a public hearing will be June 15th, which is before our next meeting, so not enough time to vote and review on anything right now, but we want to get it in front of it before that date. So procedurally, do you have some um, direction? Kat. So I'm not our office's lawyer, but I am familiar with our bylaws. And my advisement is if uh, folks are not in good standing, you are allowed to whole group vote them. Mm -hmm. However, excused absences are in good standing and those remain part of quorum. But as far as that, the procedure of voting on something before the next meeting is a vote by email of all voting members um, passable, or do we have to bring it in front of the full um, board at the next meeting? Or can there be a vote that is done electronically by email, um, which is then so that the so that action can happen before the next meeting, and then it's ratified at the following meeting? Like, I'm there are many like you know, can the executive committee, which would be all of the committee heads um, and all of the officers vote on something and then ask the full board to ratify that vote, but vote on behalf of their committees. Um, and can that be done electronically? 
Uh, I believe what Susan said is it is an acceptable. Okay, so the executive committee does have authority to vote on things with input of the committee chairs electronically and then for things like that for legislative recommendations <laughs> from the committee. Susan said put it to the, the full um, body via email. So it could be either way, right? So some places to let the executive committee make decisions and then it's ratified by the board. We could state that it could be a vote that is done, it could be a survey monkey vote, right? Where people, you know, enter their name and vote yay or nay. Um, I and think then a Google that, form is, is ideal. Or a Google form would work, but that way it's documented. It's an easy way to tally it up so that a vote can be taken in between meetings. And then that vote is taken up and ratified by the full board at the next meeting. So it appears in the minutes. And then I would say that the results of the Google form would be attached to the minutes as an exhibit as the, the backup documentation. But that would allow us to move forward in between meetings when there are things that come up. Um, because right now we're kind of paralyzed waiting for the next meeting. And, um, and this new this legislation that's coming up on the 15th is a good example, but that would be a good procedure that we have moving forward. And then the question would be, does that need to appear in the bylaws? Because uh, often any kind of voting stuff appears in the bylaws. So we could take that, we could bring that question to our general counsel, Tarika uh, Morrison and Alex. It, it, it has. They, um, okay. They... Um, but yeah, I think that's a good idea to use the Google form to expedite our um, process and progress for this, this initiative. Yeah, so I guess the question is, yeah, maybe Tarika can answer in the next day or two of, whether or not um, we need to ratify our bylaws and can we do that like because our next you know committee our next full meeting is june 22nd and so are we able to change the bylaws without a full board um vote to change the interim voting on things that come up between well, do we have do we have a quorum happens? right now i mean if we have a quorum right now couldn't we vote on it right now and Mary, you were going to say something. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I've been poking around in the bylaws being on the nominating committee. I believe that it requires two notices during meetings in order to change the bylaws. So, I mean, we could maybe we could do something procedural for, for this legislation since it, I mean, in order to remain relevant, we have to be able to act on something like this, or, you know, what's the point of the group? So, I mean, I agree, but can we do something on a temporary basis just well, for this? What we could do is we could say, do people, you know, do we want to empower um, the legislative committee and whoever else on QSWAB wants to be involved with dealing with this legislation? And are we, can we say that we will empower them to make the decision on behalf of QSWAB? I mean, we could vote on that today and say that, and then we could deal with the bylaws at a later time, but that would allow us to do that without having to change the bylaws. And so like, Mary, if you wanted to be involved in the legislation that's gonna be looked at on the 15th, and we say that you know the legislative committee plus these X number of people that we vote to approve, or we vote in favor of them being able to provide their input for the legislation on behalf of QSWAB. I mean, you, you, a lot of you guys are a lot more knowledgeable than I am on certain things. And I would feel confident saying yes, if the majority of you all agree that these things make sense, then by all means. I don't know I what other people that. think about that. I, I, mean, I can support something like that because then it, it, it empowers us as a group to um, make that this may, may basically make make a quicker decision as and and if there's impending le if there's pending legislation, especially now you know um, before the year is up, we can we can we can be able to make um, have official recommendations. Um, if, if if that was a motion or we can put a motion like that on the floor, I, you know I would second something like that. I, I would feel more comfortable if everyone had an opportunity to look at the legislation and make inputs to the legislative committee 
and then uh, the legislative committee and would, you know, take that on board. I mean, I don't necessarily think I'm the best person. I'm on the legislative committee, but other people know much more about composting and, and other aspects of the legislation that's up. So how about if we, if we could make, uh, if we could vote on that um, there is impending legislation that has to be submitted by June 15th, and we ask everybody who has, the, the legislation gets sent around by Richard, and anybody who has input to the legislation should respond to the legislative committee by X date, whatever the date is, um, and then that gets incorporated and the legislative committee then has the, uh, the, the authorization on behalf of QSWAB to submit that information. I mean, does that make sense? And Amy, does that, do you think that makes sense? Just trying to figure out a way since we can't change the bylaws without two notices, how we could at least do something before this legislation on the 15th and then codify it later on in our bylaws to make an easier way for us to move forward. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to make sure we're doing it with, um, yeah, the, the appropriate Legally. way. So yes. yeah, A Adam, you had something to say? It, one of the, I think it's super important that we speed up the decision-making process because it seems slow. And uh, I think to Mary's point, it's like feels like, what are we doing? One of the key things I think is missing is you know, if we were in a different time, we would have a retreat together and we'd go through the top five issues and we'd all generally have a consensus about, hey, if we're going to implement composting in all across the city, that we're going to have to have funding for that and, and, and enforcement. And we're going to have to understand what that means. Um, you know, we need a consensus about that because then we'll become a lot faster and more nimble in supporting these rules. And I think because we're a younger group, we haven't had that chance to, to do that. Um, that sort of general high level consensus building. And that's kind of what we're hoping to do with the planning committee and these goals with the recommendations to have a discussion so that we all get behind one singular plan and that we all understand that this is what we all think makes sense for us to move forward so that we can provide recommendations to the borough president. And you're right, it would make all of this go a lot faster because we would all know that we're pretty much on the same page and it's towards the goals that we want. But it's gonna, it takes time to build the plan and we're hoping to present a plan that everybody then gets to look at the committees get to weigh on and then have a fuller discussion moving forward. But I completely agree with you that that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, where we are today is, I think back to Mary's point, it's important for us all to read it and understand it so that we all know what it's asking for before we, we say yes or, or no. Where we are today. I seem to have lost track of the, what we're voting on. What legislation are we talking about? It's not the things for the cigarettes and the bottle committee, is it? No. The bottle uh, bill. So what legislation? Well, and, and we're not under... voting on the legislation per se, right? So we're voting whether or not QSWAB is going to endorse or has any feedback on a particular piece of legislation. So Richard, do you want to... So what is the legislation? Sure. Richard, do you want to briefly say what that is? Well, um, there, there, there were a few legislations, legislative pieces that we talked about in, in committee, but, but um, I think um, I didn't talk about one particular legislative bill. I think someone else did, um, did. Um, but, but um, you know, um, I, I don't know if Mary mentioned um, something or maybe, maybe Susan did, but what, what, what I'm mentioning is just process for all pending legislation, leg, you know, you know what I mean. So, so, so let's what say bill for is instance, being brought on? It's going to be voted on on June fifteenth. I'm, I'm. There, there's so many. Like I, I've seen, I've seen I, a lot. I think it, it may be if I could help clarify, Richard. I think what uh, what's being discussed at large is process, not a specific bill. So uh, there's a larger conversation about how to move the process of QSWAP uh, faster or with more efficiency about when we, when you all want to uh, vote in favor or uh, in disfavor 
of particular legislation. So there are many different pieces of legislation looking uh, that this group is looking to uh, either endorse or not endorse uh, that come up uh, around June 15th. And folks are trying to develop a process that would uh, be more efficient so that QSwap could do it on a shorter time frame than giving two months notice uh, to endorse or not endorse. I hope that helped clarify. Then I think we should first consider changing the bylaws because this is not going to be a one-shot deal. There are going to be other pieces of legislation that come up in the future, and we're going to have to have a a quickie way of weighing in on them. In that case, That's, we need to have something in the bylaws first. Yes, and I think we all agree on that, but there's a process where it takes two months before we can do that. It has to come up at two meetings, as is written in our current bylaws. So I think that's something that we definitely want to do moving What's forward. What's the rush? I think rush, because, why, why do we have to decide it tonight? The rush is just on particular pieces of uh, zero waste legislation. That's the rush. There's a hearing coming up. So why not the QSWAB uh, formulate a letter in support of whatever legislation is coming up and then deal with the uh, how to do it quicker later and uh, make the bylaw change first. So is there a motion on the floor for the executive committee to draft a letter? Amy, I'm, I'm trying I'm to help. Well, the drafting the letter. So, so yeah, I think that's what we're talking about because we're not really right. We're not writing legislation. We're drafting a letter on behalf of the full QSWAB. I make a motion so, that the executive committee drafts a letter uh, support with QSWAB support in regards to whatever that is. The bill. There are four bills, right? And and I I would like to add to that that the legislative like with a with advice from the legislative committee and with distribution of the legislation to the to the to all the members and an opportunity for them to give their inputs to the legislative committee and that's that's the full I'll, motion i'll support that 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 motion um the, I'll second that. Um, so I guess that would be the um, um, Reverend Carlene would that would be the, the your motion, and then um, that would be a friendly amendment, I believe. Friendly um, amendment. That, that, Absolutely. Uh, that Mary made to it. Yeah. Are there um, any and questions? I'll second that. And are there any questions? Let's see, uh, uh, Brian, do you have a question on the motion at hand? Uh, I, I guess uh, tangentially. So, just do we we don't have the ability to approve like a letter before the next meeting, right? Or is that part of the motion? That's part I think of that, the that's motion. part of the problem. That's part of the motion. Okay. That's part of the motion. But everybody gets to look at the legislation. Everybody gets to make inputs to the legislative committee, and then the legislative committee advises the executive committee on what should be in the letter. And then the executive committee votes to send, I guess, or not send, hopefully to send. And does this motion include the just this periods, this legislation or? It's just, it's just, the, it's just for this one letter for okay. for the um, for the zero waste legislation and then and then we have to address the issue through the bylaws right and that's, and that's the appropriate the, way to do wait, this just a point of clarification um, we um, the legislative committee is supposed to have um, one one meeting a month that's usually the second uh, Thursday of, of every month but what we can do is have kind of like an emergency meeting for, just for this situation to speed up process. And in that meeting, we can address all the specific legislative items that we talk about 
and then we can have the outcomes that that you know that we've been talking about way before our, our next meeting. Right. And then would it be appropriate for the corresponding secretary then to send the uh, legislation out to the membership with a date to return for that meeting? And then anybody can come to the meeting. It's a public meeting. Okay. So this is still the motion, yeah, that we're discussing right now and amending it. Okay, Kat. Servino, do you have? Yeah, I just had a question about um, the motion that we're discussing, basically. Um, so just so I have a good understanding. So there's there will be legislation on the table when it's in a rush like it is right now. Um, you'll send around an email to the QSWAB membership to, I'm sorry, I have a cockatoo on my shoulder. You. You can see she's a handful. She just keeps crawling around my neck. Um, Kat, this is just a one-time thing. Right, okay, so this is a one-time thing. So um, for this particular time, if people have, if people on QSWAP have um, issues with the legislation, I haven't seen it, but issues or have comments about it. Um, usually the way we approach things is a vote, right? So how would it work in this particular case if we gave input that was maybe different from what the legislative committee was recommending, right? Like, I'm just curious procedurally, how does that get um, handled? That's all, thank you. Uh -oh. the, the way I'm understanding it is that we're, we're just speeding up process and, and, and um, through the legislative committee, we've already recommended some pieces of legislation um, through through minutes that we've had through meetings that we've had, um, but you know, and and I've come come here to present, um, and and we presented, you know, as as a committee through 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 my reports. Um, what what's then happened is um, there, there hasn't been let's say a recommendation from from the larger group. And, and what, what we're talking about is just process to actually have that legislation um, or what, what, what we as a committee and what, what the larger body would then support um, become a recommendation, like an official recommendation, something that um, a letter can be written from the executive board that says, we you know, um, advise the borough president to, to support this piece of legislation. Or these pieces of legislation, and that's that's really what we're talking about. The larger um, conversation of process goes to changing bylaws and those kind of things, and and we're just not there yet. You know, maybe in a couple of other meetings we can get there. So we're basically, Kat, we're saying that we're asking for all of QSWAB to provide input to the legislative committee. There'll be a meeting to discuss it, but we are in effect empowering the legislative committee to make this decision since there won't be, uh, which will have input since there won't be a full meeting of QSWAB before this letter gets sent out on this occasion. And then in the future, we'll be able to vote electronically because we will have something in our bylaws that allows us to do that. Got you, I missed that. That's, that's really important and um, significant. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay, so there is a motion on the floor to, I might need help with this, to um, have the legislative committee um, and the executive board send out information on the, le on the pending legislation, receive feedback by a uh, designated date, write up a letter that from the legislative committee to the executive board that then gets sent to the public hearing on the 15th. And then will be further ratified um, at the June 22nd QSWA meeting. Is that correct? And then, so yes, if that is correct, then that is the motion on the floor. And do we need to have a discussion or can I get a second? I'll second it, Susan. All right, thank you, Susan. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. Please say aye. aye. 
Are there any opposed? And are there any abstentions? Okay, so the legislative committee got a bit of work on your plate. So get to it. <laughs> Let us know um, how we can support. And uh, the executive um, board will also be in touch and we will um, send out correspondence and communications in the coming days. So keep an eye out on your email for that. Um, if you don't receive something, please let us know um, so we can make sure that you, all voting members have the opportunity to review. So thank you all for that um, discussion on this important matter. And then um, we probably need to add to our new business um, updating of bylaws to adjust the uh, to electronic voting. Okay. Um, so I know we're getting close to time. We still have a few more items on our agenda. Um, so the, um, some of the committee reports. So the nominating committee um, will be presenting the slate of officers for 2022-2023. So um, I believe that's Janet, you're the committee chair. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So yes, here is the amazing slate of officers from your nominating committee. Um, starting with Sergeant of Arms, um, will be continuing his position, Adam Mitchell. Uh, for Corresponding Secretary, um, continuing the uh, Mac Lawrence. And Recording sec uh, Secretary will be Vanessa Antola. And for Vice Chair, Andrea Scarborough. And for Chair, Ryan Brenner. And we all thank you um, all for willing to serve. Thank you very much. And um, so we will be having elections at our June meeting. That's June 22nd, it's the fourth Wednesday of June. Um, it should be on your calendars. Um, and please confirm nominated committee. I believe we are also accepting nominations as well um, at that time, correct? If there's any additional nominations that come to the floor. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, is there, I guess, is there any questions on that? Um, thank, I'd like to thank the nominating committee for um, all of their work and effort and time um, in that. Thank you very much for bringing us um, that slate of, um, for our June elections. Thank you. Um, let's see, I'm gonna roll quickly through our old business. Um, I don't know if Andrea is still on. Um, if you or Mac wanna give an update on the Eastern Queens Alliance event. I saw some pictures, it seemed uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, you know, it was actually a very fun day. We were able to conclude Earth Month um, on April 30th. With the event, we had it at the new Idlewild Environmental Center that was that's in uh, Rosedale. Um, it was so cool because the center literally was only open for two days, so we were like the first event inside of it. Um, it's a, an amazing building. If you haven't seen it, there's pictures of it uh, on our social media. Um, but it was we had over a hundred and three people that came out to the event. Um, it was a great day. We had Kara who hosted a workshop. Um, you know, she did an amazing job. Bella Rabinovich from Big Reuse also hosted a composting workshop and Big Reuse was able to distribute compost and people were able to bring their food scraps there to be composted. Um, the entire day we had uh, DSNY hooked us up, Department of Sanitation with an art truck so people were able to go inside. It was this really nice truck, spray painted with a really nice mural. Um, you know, kids were able to go inside and honk the horn and, you know, get the feel of being inside the truck. Uh, we had e-waste collection for the entire day. Uh, we collected over 880 pounds. Um, they came back and told us. And then we also had paper shredding on site. So participants were able to just come up you know, recycle their electronics or their paper. And um, also we had a sustainable fashion show from one of our local 
designers. Her name is Lady V. Um, she had an amazing show. Jasmine participated in it. Um, you know, we had arts and crafts provided by Angela Miskis and uh, Sharice Francis. They did a really cool installation where they took, um, it was a mixed media project. So they took a lot of like old cardboard and plastic objects and they painted it and made like a little city at the end of it. So it happened throughout the day, kids were able to come over, paint, adults were painting. Um, everybody was just, it was great fellowship. We had uh, Anita Chan came by, um, Ruth was there with her family as well. And um, we had a mascot running around the whole day. Zero Waste was like a little can with a cape. Um, people were taking pictures <laughs> of it. Um, but we, we, we had a great day. It was beautiful weather. It was a great event. Um, and we, we definitely want to just keep on doing more things like that. Because to be honest with you, I really feel like it was almost like the first of its kind type of event where you had a really family atmosphere in an environmental center, in an environmental justice neighborhood, and you had live recycling going on and workshops and arts and crafts and a sustainable art show. It was just, it, it literally checked every single box and it was in Earth Month. So, um, you know, QSWAB, great job for all of the input. And, um, you know, we'll keep doing more. All right, thank you so much. Um, let's see, uh, Bilal already provided an update on the Abuela Neighborhood Maintenance uh, Cleanup event. Um, I don't know if we have anybody to provide an update on the, um, the Tobacco Products and Waste Reduction Act. I'm not sure if we have an official update. I say no, so we'll leave that on. Maybe we can get a better update next month. Um, and I'm not sure if we have an update on the EPR budget. Um, if we have any, maybe we can get a better update on that next month as well. Um, so on the new business, um, we just a note, note that I already said that we have elections at our June meeting. Um, Let's see, if, I think Frank, did you want to um, bring up your compost question? If you're still on, I see you're still on. Yeah, it was just a ge general question. I know it's yeah. potential legislation, but I didn't know how the mechanics were, will work. Um, I was just more curious, like, are they going to be funding community sites to help you with composting? Um, is the composting going to be done in the city or is it going to be trucked out, right? I mean, I was just kind of curious, like, how, how would it work? Will they could end up competing with the community groups that are doing composting now? like? Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that sounds like it's pertaining to the legislation. Is that my understanding correctly? Yes. Yeah. Like okay. what it would actually look like. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, so I think when, I don't know if anybody can answer that right now, if anybody's very familiar with the legislation, so we can, um, I guess table that. And if that is the piece of legislation that we're actually talking about right now, then we can send that around and, um, hopefully ask and answer some questions during that um, electronic process for here. If, if there's anything um, through, through the legislative committee, you know, we'll probably address it. We can get, get into more detail there. Okay. Yeah, and I know it'll be um, a pretty tight turnaround um, to kind of get that out get response and things like that. So if you do see that come in your email, I know everybody's super busy. Um, if you can reply um, within, you know, maybe a couple of days so we can get that um, feedback in and incorporate it into the um, QSWAB response. So we are at time. Is there any other items of new business? Sorry, Mac, you have your hand up, sorry. So quickly, I just want to say that, so we're gonna have the last installation of that Waste Not series that we're co-sponsoring with Eastern Queens Alliance and the other local electeds. It's actually focused on legislation. Um, it's gonna be on June 11th. It's gonna be Zoom. Um, I know right now we're, we're really trying to have the local electeds just come and present their environmental and waste related um, you know, bills that they're introducing. So definitely stay tuned for the more details that come out, but it's perfect timing. Excellent. Yeah, um, Richard, Richard, you gotta be there, man. <laughs> you gotta be there, yeah. Uh, June 11th below. Um, all right, is I there make any a other... motion that we adjourn the meeting? 
Okay. Um, I do want to um, make one more um, statement, though, that I know there's been a lot of questions about when meetings are, when committee meetings are. Um, we do have those up now on the Queen's um, Swab website. I did include that in the chat link earlier today or earlier in this meeting. Um, so um, do check there. It is updated. Um, I think combination of folks are continuing to keep that um, updated, um, especially if there are changes. Um, so we try to send an email reminder and then also check the calendar. Um, so we try to get it from all places so everybody can kind of keep informed. Okay, so um, Carol's made a motion to adjourn the meeting. I second, hello. Second, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank, Aye. thank you everybody. We will see you in June. Thanks, good night.